seen you go for a hundred G's. Right on the moment, don't button on this one. The success of previous productions, West Side Story and A View From A Bridge, it was always going to be tough for Gigglesworth School to pull off a particularly show-stopping conclusion to their trilogy of New York shows. After much deliberation, it was decided upon that the spectacular extravaganza to finish off this triad would be the classic West End musical, Guys and Dolls. Set in 1950s New York, the play tells the story of the desperate Nathan Detroit who needs money for an illegal dice game. Enter notorious gambler Sky Masterson, a guy who can never turn down a bet. To Sky, Nathan offers one wager that he surely can't lose. Guys and Dolls was one of the greatest successes that Broadway theatre has ever known. The original production opened on Broadway on the 24th of November 1950 and ran for 1,200 performances, netting more than $12 million. The romantic and funny Guys and Dolls is populated with gangsters and gamblers, missionary dolls and scantily clad showgirls, and retains one of the greatest musical scores in the history of American theatre. The play offers a challenging range of parts, both large and small, musical and dramatic. Thankfully, Gigglesworth has a fantastic range of actors to fill these roles. My character is called Nathan Detroit and um, he's a gambler. What's quite odd is that Nathan has been engaged to uh, Adelaide, his fiance, for 14 years, which is um, it's kind of unheard of. So my character is called Adelaide and she's a. I, I think she's a stripper, but it's not. No, but it's. I'm not. <laughs> so she's a dancer and she has one true love and he's called Nathan, and they've been engaged for 14 years, and she's absolutely desperate to marry him, but he somehow keeps avoiding it. He has a big bet with uh, Max Ryder, who's playing Sky Masterson. Uh, my character in the play is called Sky Masterson, but his real name is Obadiah, because he's, um, although he's on the outside very confident, and he's a ladies man, and he's a gambler, and he's a high roller, he's that sort of outgoing, person, the, the, the typical perfect man that every man wants to be, but he's got that like thing where he's actually quite sensitive on the inside and no one really sees that until Sarah brings it out of him. I'm playing Sarah Brown who is very prim and proper and um, she's a member of the mission and basically what happens to her is a guy comes along who's a gambler and the bet is to take me to Havana and eventually I do go to Havana with him and fall in love with him. He's really sensitive with her and he's actually quite romantic even though he's not really been romantic previously. I've never been in love before
play Nasty Nasty Johnson and he is, I'd say, he's the fat cheerful bloke. He likes his food a lot, so yeah, I get in trouble with Nathan quite a bit. My character is Benny Southstreet. I'm a comedic New York character who is enhanced by Nicely Nicely Johnson, as he is my uh, friend in the play. I'd say I'm the boss, really, um, and he's just really the stupid one. Although, we're both quite stupid. Hey, how are you, folks? How are you? Good. You know Nicely Nicely Johnson? Sure, how goes it? Nicely Nicely, thank you. There is quite a few occasions where I smack him around the head with a newspaper, which kind of sums us up, really. In rehearsing, um, you're probably very brutal compared to me. Brutal? Well, what do you mean by that? Well, beating me up, really. Like, punching me every so often. So you say you get physical abuse? <laughs> No, not from me. Benny gets it from nicely. <laughs> yeah. Charles does not get it from Will. I just I, verbally insult yes. him when I'm with Will. Uh, well, he's called Big Jewel. Um, he's a mob boss from Chicago. Big, dangerous man. What well, is the stereotypical mob boss, really? Shut up! He, uh, he gets his way. He uh, puts a bullet in anyone who doesn't uh, get his way. So, uh... So no one my character is called Harry the Horse, and he is a gambler who's living in New York who's just looking for any game to get money. He'll side with anyone as long as he gets paid, he's just looking for money. So you tell him I'm loaded and looking for action. I just acquired 5,000 potatoes. 5,000 bucks? I uh, collected the reward on my father. Being involved in a whole school production is both a nerve-wracking and exhilarating experience. And as in every play, there's bound to be at least some aspects which are found tough or fun for those taking part. So, what are the most enjoyable and challenging parts of being involved in a musical such as Guys and Dolls? Um, what I most enjoyed was probably beginning to feel like an actor, because that's what I want to do when I'm older, so... I'm enjoying like having to learn all my lines and then ex like exploring different things that you can do with different scenes and working with different people, it's really good fun. Remember, it's the same as Soul Mission, located on 409 West 49th Street. Open all day and all night. I think I enjoy probably my favourite scene is probably the uh, gambling scene. Ha! Um, and I'll lose quite a lot of money, but yeah, it's my favourite scene. The scene's been a great part of it. But everything is great about the acting, dancing, just working with other people is really good. Personally, I find the dancing quite difficult because I have two left feet. <laughs> I just can't dance. The main challenges for me was probably not killing myself during dance. Learning to dance as well, just because I physically can't. <laughs> I'm like a stranded hippo, so I just try my best, but you know. Alongside the singing, Every musical carries the other crucial challenge of choreography, a task that in this case was accomplished with considerable success. And now, please my welcome you to Miss Adelaide and the Debutantes!
In terms of the challenges that we face in our ensemble, time has been a big one of them because this year Shakespeare Schools Festival has cut more into our time and we had two weeks and a half terms, so we've had less time. It's going to hit much sooner we, than we think and Warps and Stoll are being pushed their limits but as ever they're very apt to do their job. I know flattery, <laughs> I know flattery. <laughs> Main challenges was definitely getting to grips with the lines. Learning your lines. Learning lines. Learning lines. Mostly learning lines. Challenges were getting to know different people and learning, learning to act against different people that I've never really spoken to before. And also working with the ensemble because if the ensemble doesn't cooperate with you, it doesn't look great. So you have to get them to work as well. In order to manage these highs and lows, you have to be a particular type of person. Taking part in such a full-on experience needs commitment, dedication and drive, which are surely qualities that make the experience a valuable one for young people. What kind of person is needed then to undertake this sort of project? You can be anyone. It's, it's what you should do whilst you're in it. You don't have to be the confident fool that I am. I think it's really important because then you learn how to manage your time well um, and it's a good group thing to do and it gets you integrated with different years. Even if you're shy, you can still come and join in and like, everyone will accept you. No one will be rejected. Which be cannot deny. You just need to be confident with a love of acting, a love of trying to be somebody else. You need to be able to uh, work well with other people, because as I said previously, like, you have to bounce off other people for your performance to really come out. So, um, yeah, you need to have good people skills. This, I think there's something in it for everybody. I dreamed last night, I got on the boat to heaven, and by some valuable for um, the school to be uh, to get involved in this kind of uh, play and production because um, it brings everyone together because it allows you to meet other people and to make new friends and it develops your confidence it's quite a maturing experience I remember when I did West Side and I was thrust into working with the people in the years above I was like wow they're just getting on with it they're not messing around and I learned a lot from just watching them work like adults but still having fun. I've got to lead quite a lot of other younger students. I'm supposed to be the role model as one of the principals. It teaches young people to work with other people which is helpful in later life, so as group work. I think definitely um, you, you're able to mix with a lot of different people that you wouldn't normally mix with. You're mixing with different um, staff, different teachers. I don't study drama at school. So being able to be directed by Mr. Warburton and Ms. Stoll is something that I'm not used to. You definitely get a lot of experience of watching two very able directors direct and being able to learn from that. That's something I've learned quite a fair bit from. And I think it's just nice to just say that you've been in a production and it's something that you've achieved. <laughs> The production ran for four nights and was hailed as a complete triumph by local theatre critic Jill O'Donnell. She commented that the cast filled the stage with tremendous energy and that the whole evening was truly outstanding and one which was a huge credit to all those involved. There was a great sense of comic timing, words were clear whether sung or spoken and accents never faltered so that every line was delivered with maximum impact. The singing itself was superb. The reaction from parents and fellow students alike was unanimous. Guys and Dolls was a tremendous success, and as ever, Giggleswick School had produced yet another exceptional show.
Office? 